show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. You are your greatest asset. It's time you started investing in that. Visit betterhelp.com super and take care of you. Hey, brother! Holy goodness, friends, it has been a long time, literally years, since we have gotten even a morsel of new information in the wizarding world. But just yesterday, we finally got a new title for the newest installment of the Fantastic Beasts series, The Secrets of Dumbledore, coming out April 15th, 2022. Right out of the gate, the title of this movie feels like the perfect bookend to go with the Crimes of Grindelwald title, and I have a feeling it is going to give us an enormous amount of context so we can better understand what what the heck was going on in that movie. The good news is if you are watching this video is that we have a fairly good idea about what those secrets are going to be and how they're going to fit into the bigger picture. And the even better news is that if we are right, I think it will actually make the events of the last movie much more interesting. And at some point guys, in the extreme future, our children's children won't have to wait four years between each installment. My personal headcanon is that they're just gonna let Jude Law grow out the beard. Naturally. But just imagine being able to watch these movies back to back. Your utter confusion will not have to last but a minute. You won't have to lie in bed at night staring at the ceiling fan, attempting to understand how that body swap scene actually made sense. Or why the Lestrange family is suddenly so important. Or who is Credence? Or can Jacob see the castle at the end of the last movie? Because he shouldn't be able to. And if he can, it means he's a wizard. But in the meantime, or should I call it real time, we're all stuck here in speculationsville. Occupation us. So guys, hold on to your butts because we are going to do our very best to explain this next installment's title, what we think is going to happen, and how it's all going to come together. Here we go! Guys, before we dive on in, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, HelloTushy.com. Okay guys, over this past year while stuck at home, I finally reached my breaking point. I had to renovate the one bathroom that I have in my house. It was small and tight and outdated and singular. We made so many amazing changes and it is just so much better. We have heated tile floors, but also we added a bidet from hellotushy.com. And to be fair, these can totally be installed to any toilet at any point in time. It doesn't require any additional plumbing or electricity and literally snaps on in just a few minutes. So it wasn't required as part of a renovation, but the fact is I renovated everything and it's still my favorite part of this bathroom. And the Hello Tushy Bidet is amazing because one, it works better. Hard stop. You are more clean. And two, it's eco-friendly, stylish, and completely a conversation piece, trust me. Plus, HelloTushy.com has an entire collection of bathroom essentials that make your restroom the best room, including their Tushy Ottoman, which makes a difference, and their Tushy Brush, which to be clear is for your toilet, not yourself. So start washing today with a Tushy Bidet for a better clean. Yay! Head on over to HelloTushy.com super to get 10% off and free shipping on your order. Again, it's going to be HelloTushy.com super to get 10% off and free shipping. HelloTushy.com super. Link is in the description down below. Oh, and also after you buy and install your Tushy, be sure to show it off. Tag us and HelloTushy on Instagram. Okay, so right out of the gate with the secrets of Dumbledore, we get a lot, a lot, a lot of information. One detail is simply, despite the fact that Newt's commander is seemingly the protagonist of this story, it is going to be revolving around, at the very least, the Dumbledore line. This, of course, does hold significant value because of the grand reveal at the end of Crimes of Grindelwald, where Grindelwald reveals the credence that he is, in fact, Aurelius Dumbledore. In the movie, this was like a total mind-blown moment until you slowly start to realize that we actually know kind of of a lot about the Dumbledore family, especially thanks to Rita Skeeter of all people and her book, The Life and Lies of Albus Dumbledore, which I'm starting to believe is fairly accurate, but also everything that Dumbledore tells Harry after he attempts to die in King's Cross. At which point you realize that there has never at any point in the existing canon been any mention of this additional brother at all, which is slightly problematic in one of two ways. Either it makes the impact of this entire series, the Fantastic Beast series, less impactful, to the point where Dumbledore doesn't even bring it up to Harry in like his grand confession, or he's still lying to Harry, like in the semi afterlife, when all the cards are on the table. And if that's true, then it just takes away from that scene, which no big deal. It's only like part of the climax of the most successful book series in like history ever. Harry is literally confronting him about being honest about his family. Now's the time to tell him. Which like to us, you know, in this community together, that's pretty disappointing. Although 
it's somewhat possible when you do consider the fact that Professor McGonagall is anachronistically included in the crimes of Grindelwald. Go with Professor McGonagall, please. Which would further that idea that the existing canon is not laying the framework for the story that's unfolding before us. But to us here in the SCB community, we refuse to believe that because we are stubborn. It will all come together. We just gotta wait and be patient. That being said, let's dig in. McGonagall pretty much has to have a time turner. It's the only explanation for video by clicking the card. Okay, so the secrets of Dumbledore very well may sound like it is referring to our boy Albus, but I think it's very possible it's referring to the Dumbledore family at large. And again, given the fact that we're supposed to believe that Dumbledore has now been completely honest about his secrets to Harry, I think that diving into the entire Dumbledore family could be a lot more interesting and satisfying. And also helpful because we've already been given some confusing tidbits as it pertains to this family. For example, there is a line from Albus Dumbledore himself who says, There's a story in my family that a phoenix will come to any Dumbledore in desperate need. This line is kind of vague at best, but what I really think it is included and intended to do is convince you, the viewer, that this is true. This being that Credence is in fact a Dumbledore because Grindelwald himself repeats this very idea to Credence and then reveals that the tiny bird that Credence has been nursing throughout the movie is in fact a phoenix. There is a legend in your family that a phoenix will come to any member who is in dire need. And I think that we, the audience, bite down on this idea even harder because we also know that later in life, Dumbledore goes on to very uniquely own a phoenix. And I think that this information can be close, but not quite accurate. And in that way, it serves as a really good misdirect for us, the audience, but also isn't disappointing if the actual explanation is even cooler or just already exists, and I actually think both of those things are true. Because what I personally believe is that when a Dumbledore dies, they become a phoenix. And I'm gonna back that up with one specific passage from Albus Dumbledore's own funeral. Then several people screamed. Bright white flames had erupted around Dumbledore's body and the table upon which it lay, higher and higher they rose, obscuring the body. White smoke spiraled into the air and made strange shapes. Harry thought for one heart-stopping moment that he saw a phoenix fly joyfully into the blue, but the next second, the fire had vanished. Okay, so let's just assume for a second that I'm right, that in this moment, literally what Harry is witnessing is Dumbledore becoming a phoenix and flying away. And yes, I do know that there is still physically a body inside of the tomb when Voldemort goes and like steals the Elder Wand from it. I'm saying more like a phoenix is birthed from the death of a Dumbledore. But this change in perspective when applied to the Fantastic Beast stories makes a huge difference. Now, one of the most confusing portions of the Crimes of Grindelwald movie is who Credence actually is and how he might be related to Lita Lestrange and this new character, Yusuf Kama. It's explained through this sort of bizarre set of circumstances that makes them all kind of sort of half siblings. And it's made even more confusing because like in all great stories, there is a prophecy, the predictions of Tycho Dodonis, which go like this. Son cruelly banished, despair of the daughter, return great avenger with wings from the water. Again, this is vague, but Yusuf thinks he's figured it all out. You are the winged raven returned from the sea, but I, I am the avenger of my family's ruin. While he's close, Yusuf is wrong and actually just battling a weird eyeball infection. Calamari. But he would have been right if not for one key and very not well-known detail. And by not well-known, I literally mean one person knew. That person was Lita, and that incident was the swapping of two babies on the ship that sank on their way to America. This detail was slightly ridiculous and made like the big twist of the movie confusing and kind of anticlimactic, but when it's properly interpreted, it's actually kind of awesome because the really, really, really important detail here is that Lita is the only person who knows about the baby swap, which means that Grindelwald, like Yusuf, pretty much knew everything about this story, except for the incredibly important detail that Credence and Corvus Lestrange were swapped, which means that Grindelwald does genuinely believe that he is talking to Aurelius Dumbledore, but he's wrong and also just killed literally the only person who knew? Well, except for everybody else in the room, who she also told, they also know now. But again here, the most fascinating part about him being wrong is that he is almost right, which means there was in fact another Dumbledore on the boat that night. It just wasn't Credence. It was the boy he was swapped with, the real Corvus Lestrange, 
the little boy who drowned that night. Now, I'm just going to assume that you are willing to trust me on this one, but the dates at which Corvus Lestrange supposedly was born do not line up with when Percival Dumbledore was still alive. Meaning that this half brother of Dumbledore's came from his mother's side of the family, or this woman right here. This sentence is going to be confusing, but this is the woman that Corvus Sr. had Corvus Jr. with after he had Lita with Yusuf Kama's mother. I didn't write the story, I'm just here to interpret it. The story does tell us that this woman's name is Clarice Tremblay, but again, I just think it's actually misinformation and this woman is actually Kendra Dumbledore. Meaning the boy who is lost at sea is Dumbledore's half brother by way of Kendra. And again, what happens to a Dumbledore when they die? they become a phoenix. And again, let's jump back to the predictions of Tycho Dodonis. A son cruelly banished, despair of the daughter, return great avenger with wings from the water. Yusuf almost had it. He is the son who's cruelly banished. Lita is the despair of the daughter. Then we have return great avenger with wings from the water. The boy who is lost at sea. The boy who I believe to be a Dumbledore will return as a phoenix after drowning in the water. Grindelwald tells Credence that he is really Aurelius Dumbledore, and he's wrong, but the real Aurelius is still in the room. <laughs> but so then you might be wondering, okay, well, if that's the real Aurelius, then who is Credence? This one actually brings me tremendous delight. If you have been a longtime fan of this channel, then you know that we correctly predicted that Claudia Kim's character was ultimately going to be Nagini. We did this about eight months before the release of the movie, going off of nothing more than a ticket stub to the circus and some really well-designed wardrobe. And this felt like a huge win to us here at the channel because it was a huge called it moment. But then once we saw the movie, it was also kind of disappointing. Nagini didn't really do anything. So we were all like, whoa, we called it. She didn't do anything. Called it. But that doesn't actually make her role uninteresting. And I actually think that her inclusion, her character is a huge clue as to who Credence actually is. Because if you watch carefully, you'll realize that Credence is the only character to actually communicate back and forth with Nagini, who is actively in the process of permanently being a snake, which is incredibly interesting because in the wizarding world, there is a very, very, very small group of people who are capable of talking to snakes. And that is members of the Gaunt family, or more importantly, descendants of Salazar Slytherin. So you may have been wondering, well, if Credence isn't a Dumbledore, then how do you explain him being so powerful? He literally blew up a mountain and was able to survive being an Obscurus. That's because he's a Gaunt, or maybe in more familiar terms, the heir of Slytherin. <laughs> oh, and did we mention that this series starts the same year that Tom Riddle was born? Because yeah, it does. Boom, I'm out. Okay, I'm back, because I have to close out the video and everything. Stuff to do. Also, guys, don't forget that tomorrow evening, September 24th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are going to be hosting all fandoms trivia right here on the Super Carlin Brothers channel. So be sure to set a reminder in your phone and join for all of the fun. There's going to be some really cool prizes this week and some new announcements and products from carlinbrotherscoffee.com. Also, guys, you may have noticed that I've been wearing my SCV Pride t-shirt throughout the entire episode. These shirts are now available over at supercarlinbrothers.store and 100% of the proceeds of the sales of these shirts we go Going to LGBTQ causes. If you would like to enter for your own free t-shirt, we're going to be giving five away. All you have to do is head on over to the Instagram page at Carlin Brothers and like this photo and maybe leave a comment or something, you know, follow, whatever, whatever feels right. But guys, for my question of the day, what do you think? Is there anything you really want to see in the rest of this series? Be sure to let us know in the towel section down below. But otherwise, guys, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to see those other two videos that I mentioned more in detail, you can do so by checking out right over here to see how Credence is in fact a member of the Gaunt family or right here to find out how Aurelius is in fact the Phoenix. But otherwise, until next time, bye. Oh, and guys, also don't forget that on October 2nd, a week from this Saturday, we are running a digital 10K where you can either go and run, move however you want, 10 kilometers, or you can read for 10,000 seconds. We're gonna be hosting a live stream again here on Super Carlin Brothers and raising money for a great cause. If you'd like to get a medal of your own, you can do so at the link in the description down below.